Hello, hello, grade 11s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwasos Ukwabela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. Okay, so we have question two on atomic combinations. It says, consider the following compounds. We have oxygen gas, H2O water, and then H3O plus um, our hydronium ion. Then 2.1 says define the term molecule. So quickly on that, we say a molecule is a group of two or more covalently bonded atoms that function as a unit. So for two marks, that's how you are expected to define the term molecule. Then in 2.2, they say draw a Lewis structure or draw the Lewis structures for oxygen gas, right? Now, what you want to do with uh, drawing the Lewis structure is you want to check your periodic table and kind of identify where your oxygen is in terms of uh, the group number. So up here, as you can see with the numbers, that's indicating our, our group number. But then what we are mostly interested in when we are drawing the Lewis structure is the valence electrons, right? So we will look at the Roman figures. So since the Roman figures are trying to tell us about uh, the valence electrons of each and every element here. So for all the elements in group number one, they have one valence electron. And then for all the elements in group number two, they have two valence electrons. Then in group number 13, we have three valence electrons. So you kind of just take the 13 and minus 10. So the 10 is from all the transition metals that we skip in here because we are not really interested in the uh, transition metals. Then uh, just like that, if we have group number 14, then it's 14 minus 10. We are left with four valence electrons. And then looking at this, we can see that our oxygen is in group number 16, which means that it has six valence electrons. So that's 16 minus 10 and then we are left with that six indicated by the roman figure there now how do we draw this one so if i have to show you the process as to uh, how we actually draw that one is that we have this oxygen with six valence electrons so if we have to put our valence electrons that's one two three four five six and then if we have to have another oxygen since we have two uh, atoms of oxygen there that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what happens is that uh, this, since these two electrons here are not bonded, then they will just uh, kind of push towards, uh, towards each other or one electron will just move towards the other one so that uh, we kind of have that uh, lone pair shape. Then like that, now, at the end of the day, this is now what you will have. This is what you are expected to draw. So you have it like that. Remember, this electron is now uh, bonded to that one there. So, but then if you go to the science of it, we know that they have opposite spins according to your SP notation or what you call uh, the half bow diagram. We know that. Uh, these two electrons will just be in opposite spins like that. So because the nature of electrons is that uh, they will want to repel each other, then just like that, you will have your bond here. You will have your bond forming, and then we can all see that there is a double bond. So we have one electron joining to that other electron and another electron from this atom joining to that electron. So this here forms a double bond and then what you're expected to draw for that two marks is not this whole thing here not the whole process you're just expected to draw what we have below here right so you should only uh, indicate this here you should only indicate this and then that's it for your two marks now let's proceed uh, to 2.2.2 so for 2.2.2 the first thing that you want to do there is figure out which uh, so if we have more than two if we have more than two atoms we have to figure out which one are we going to make the central atom right so in most of the cases you just make the one that has 
a uh, only one kind of that atom in that molecule so we can see that this is formed out of two atoms of hydrogen and then one uh, atom of oxygen so uh, it goes without saying that what we should make the central atom here is obviously our oxygen atom so we have oxygen and then now let's fill in the valence electrons remember every time we are filling the valence electron from grade 10 uh, we go about it in a clockwise direction so that's one two three four and then five and then six and then all you have to do now is a uh, join in your hydrogens right so you have your hydrogen in group number one meaning it only has one valence electron so uh, the hydrogen will join with its one valence electron and then like that and then there we go we got ourselves our bonds so we have two bonds here so this is not a double bond this is just a single bond and then another single bond here so that's uh, the lewis structure that we have for a uh, h2o then for two marks that's what you're expected to draw right then uh let's proceed to 2.3 it says the h3o plus ion forms when the oxygen atom in h2o donates its lone pair of electrons into a vacant orbital of the hydrogen ion right so remember this here means that the hydrogen lost its electron so as we can see here the h plus indicates that uh, this hydrogen here has zero electrons so there are no electrons in here because the plus here indicates that it just lost the electron so that in that way it will not be able to donate its own electron let's uh check that one so 2.3.1 they asking write down the name of the type of bond described by the underlying phrase right so we call that the dative covalent bond right so we call that the dative covalent bond then they say draw a lewis structure for the h3o plus ion so but before we draw that let me kind of show you the whole process how it goes uh, how how the donation actually takes place so remember we have our h2o which uh, we did draw in the last question so i want to indicate using my lewis structure then there we go and then remember we have our hydrogen here with its one valence electron so one valence electron there we go there we go now remember it's reacting with a hydrogen ion not an atom it's reacting with a hydrogen ion ion which has uh, no electrons right so now since it has no electrons it will have to receive both of its electron from the lone pair of the oxygen atom here so we can see that the oxygen atom is the one that has two pairs of uh, lone pairs then that means it can donate one of its lone pair to the uh, hydrogen ion so this is the structure that we end up having after uh, the the sharing has taken place so we have our oxygen here and then again with our electrons and then we have our hydrogen here hydrogen and then having its a uh, valence electron of one but then what happens after is that this hydrogen ion here will have to attach to one of these lone pairs now it doesn't matter where you attach it you can put it here you can put it there that is really not important as to where you put it so as long as you put it in one of the lone pairs so whether you put it up there or you put it on the side it doesn't really matter guys you can just uh, put it in one of the lone pairs and then that's how we actually have a uh, that uh, structure of the h3o plus so this is the structure of the hydronium ion so what you are supposed to draw is only this one here for two marks you are only supposed to draw this structure and not the whole process right so note that i was just showing you the whole process as to how they get there but then when it comes to drawing they only want you to indicate that part there okay then let's look at 2.4 it says which molecule is polar is it the h2o or the o2 
Now, if we can look at O2 already, we know the answer to that one because looking at O2, we can tell that this is a diatomic molecule. Now, a diatomic molecule is simply just a molecule that is formed out of uh, two atoms of the same kind. So we can say that this oxygen gas is formed out of two atoms of oxygen, so making it a diatomic molecule. But we know that the diatomic molecule, it has a change in electronegativity that is equal to zero. Remember, every time we want to determine whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, we look at the electronegativity difference. If our electronegativity difference is giving us zero, that means that molecule is nonpolar. So why is it nonpolar? Because there's even distribution, right? So there's even distribution of electrons here on the uh, oxygen uh, on the O2 uh, molecule, right? So we can say for the O2, this one is nonpolar. This one is nonpolar. Why? Because it has change in En equal to zero, right? And then what about the H2O? The H2O has to be the one that is what? Polar, obviously. Number one, because we know that the H2O shape, according to our VSEPR, is asymmetrical. So we say it has an asymmetrical shape, which is, uh, if we want to be specific about the shape, it's a bent or angular shape for this one. So it has a bent or angular shape. And then again, if we are to look at the change in electronegativity, we know that the change in electronegativity will be greater than zero between, between the OH bond, right? So if we have to calculate the electronegativity difference between these ones, we can see that if we take the number there, which is 3.5 minus uh, the 2.1 here, obviously we'll, we'll get a number that is greater than zero, which suggests that this is a polar molecule, right? So that's the reason O2 is nonpolar because of its change in En being equal to zero. And then H2O is polar, number one, because of its asymmetrical shape, it's a bent or angular shape. That means there is not an even distribution of electrons. So the distribution of electrons is uneven. And then number two, it is nonpolar because its change in electronegativity is greater than zero between the oxygen and hydrogen bond. And that's how you were supposed to explain uh, that question there. Then with all that being said, guys, please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.